Good afternoon and welcome to the Franchise Brands PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this quarter presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and they can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab. Situate in the right hand corner of your screen, just simply type in your questions and press send. The company made up in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. Have the company can review all the questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. And I'd now like to hand you over to Stephen Hemsley, Executive Chairman. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Franchise Brands presentation for the interim accounts for 2024. I'd like to start with giving you an overview of uh, Franchise Brands. We're a multi-brand, uh, franchise-focused B2B van delivery uh, business. We have a presence in 10 countries uh, with seven brands. Uh, Pertec, Metro Rod, and Metro Plum provide essential services uh, on a mostly reactive uh, basis, which means that we are emergency suppliers. And, and this makes the business quite resilient um, in, in uh, more difficult uh, economic times, um, although not recession proof, as, as some of my colleagues will uh, be explaining to you later on today. Uh, Filter provides a more planned service to the hospitality sector and our B2C brands, uh, consumer facing brands of Chips Away, Oven Clean and, and Barking Mad are mostly single van franchise operators. The business generates system sales on, on an annualized basis of about 400 million. And this year we um, are, are, are going to the market towards adjusted EBITDA between 35 and 37. Uh, million. We have over 625 franchisees who employ over 3,000 people using 2,000 service vans in, in 10 countries. We ourselves have 650 direct employees in our franchise business and also in some direct labour businesses. We're focused on building market leading businesses, primarily by a franchise model. But we will use what we call DLOs, direct labor businesses, direct, direct labor operations, where we see the opportunity to enhance the franchise channel doing that. And that usually means um, enabling us to extend the range of services the franchisees are able to offer by training them up. Our strategy is to grow our franchise businesses as we believe if they grow, <coughs> we grow. We use something called the maximum potential model to identify the total addressable market. And in using that model and analyzing our businesses, we think the total addressable market for our businesses at present supplying the services we do is, is 1.8 billion. Uh, now, as we expand the range of services, obviously that market opportunity it increases. But as you see from our current run rate of 400 million system sales to 1.8 billion, there's plenty of room for expansion. We then use our growth tools to exploit that market. A key part of the strategy of the business is to leverage shared uh, central services, because we be believe we can use that to drive our operational gearing. And, and those key areas are really technology, marketing, and finance, and we'll talk about those a little later. Next slide, please. <coughs> This slide gives you some idea of the um, contribution each of the businesses makes to, to the whole. So if we look at um, uh, adjusted EBITDA before central overheads, around half the contribution now comes from uh, Pertec, which we acquired in April uh, 23. The water and waste division, uh, which is comprised of Metro Rod, uh, 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 Metro Plum, Willow Pumps, and several other businesses, which Peter will talk about shortly, uh, contributes just over a quarter of the business. Filter International, which we acquired in uh, 22, uh, contributes about 15%. The B2C division, uh, which was the original foundation of the, of, of the group, now only 5% of the total. And our own in-house uh, software company, Azura, a, 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 a very small percentage at present, although huge opportunities to, to, to grow that business. Next slide, please. I'm gonna let my colleague, uh, 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 Andrew Mallows, our CFO, go through the numbers. So I, really what I wanna do here is just give you an overview of the feel for the, the first half of the year. 
which I would regard as a sort of satisfactory performance. We, we, we definitely didn't shoot the lights out. Um, the economic background we're trading in at the moment is, is quite subdued in certain sectors and in certain countries, which my colleagues will talk about uh, later. But in view of the essential emergency services we provide, I think we delivered a, a pretty resilient uh, uh, performance. There are fortunately now some signs that that uh, 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 reduced trading in certain areas it is improving. So we think the outlook for the second half may be a little brighter uh, than it was in the more difficult conditions in the first half. And hopefully beyond that, uh, we can get back to our normal double digit rates of system sales uh, growth. So I'd like now to hand over to um, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Chris, who will go through uh, the Pertech business. And um, get the next slide and the next slide again, please. Thank you. So, Pertec, uh, still relatively new in the franchise brands business. Uh, we have European coverage across a number of countries, but it can really be considered as two distinct uh, businesses. We have UK and Ireland, Germany and Austria, Belgium and the Netherlands, which are all mature markets. So each of these provides national coverage, and we're also the premier supplier of van-based breakdown services in each of these markets. They're principally franchised, though we do have some direct labor organizations in each of the countries. And we operate under a royalty model as a percentage of franchised sales. In each of these markets, we have expanded the product range and the range of services. So we've moved away from the traditional breakdown service to provide preventative and predictive maintenance activities and we've also extended the range of products and services away from hydraulic hoses into an expanded range of hoses for other applications, hygienic and industrial, and the range of products to look at ancillary hydraulic applications, accumulators, power packs, and cylinders. So this has allowed us to grow the amount of spend we have with each customer. This represents 94% of the system sales and 92% of the technicians. We have two newer markets, Sweden and France. These are both operated as direct labor organizations where we manage the technicians. In Sweden, we operate in the populated southern portion of the country. And in France, we operate in the greater Paris area and in Lyon and Grenoble. So in both of these countries, the focus is on expanding the geographic reach so that we can provide the services to a wider range of customers and also utilize the experience gained in our other more mature markets to extend the range of services and the range of products. And as we're moving forward, hopefully we can then eventually move to a national coverage in both of these countries to become the premier supplier of van services in both of the countries. We move on to the next slide, please. So the results that we've achieved in the first half really show the resilience of Pertec. So top line growth has been achieved, even though our principal construction and plant hire markets have been subdued across most of the countries. As we've seen with uh, the increase in interest rates uh, post COVID, that's uh, really had a negative impact on construction activity in most of the countries, with the exception of Germany. Um, and so this has obviously restricted the activity level in those markets. In Germany, we have a slightly different experience. The construction activity there that we work in is principally focused on infrastructure, which is supported by the government. So there's a significant amount of money being put into uh, motorways, bridges and rail has enabled uh, the construction activity to remain very strong in that particular market. However, in Germany, we're also quite heavily exposed to the manufacturing business, principally the tier two and tier three supply base into the car industry and other major manufacturers. This activity level is reduced obviously impacting uh, the amount of uh, preventative maintenance work that we're doing in those factories. However, 
the good news is that the diversification strategy that we've been following for the last 10 or so years has really allowed us to grow into other sectors which have not been as negatively impacted. So the logistics market, so rail, uh, marine and materials handling, uh, also utilities and food and beverage have allowed us to continue to grow our retail sales in spite of the contraction in this important market. Our key focus for the rest of this year is to continue to drive system sales and to improve our operational efficiency. So operational efficiency is being driven by adoption of improved IT systems. So we're unifying our business systems around the franchise brand's standard products. The works management system that we utilize in Pertec is being replaced in each of the countries and we're moving to the vision system, which is utilized by Metro Rod and Filter in the UK. The vision system is built by Azura, so it allows us to adopt and adapt this to the specific requirements of Pertec. We're already rolling this system out in Pertec France, and we're building the system to be able to replace the current system utilized in the UK, in Germany, and in Benelux to meet our current customers' requirements, um, and this system should be ready for rolling out next year. The system has improved automation functionality that will enable our franchisees to improve their operational efficiency, streamline their operations, and focus themselves more on sales. As we look to sales, we have the maximum potential model that we spoke about on the last call, which has been adopted across all of the franchise brands' businesses, and we're starting to roll that out within the Pertec mature markets. We've utilized the max potential model to identify what a Pertec customer looks like in each of these countries. We've then purchased the data on all of those companies that exist within the mature markets, and we're now going through a trial process of how we convert those from potential customers into spending customers. We've started to achieve some success and we're rolling that out and improving the efficiency of that operation over time. I think at our next meeting, I'll be able to give you more of an update on how successful we have been. Finally, we have cross-selling opportunities. So we have a great list of customers in each of the franchise brands' businesses. However, there's a significant opportunity to cross-sell the services that we operate within the business to some of those customers. A good example of this is that we have competed for the work for a major utility company in the UK recently. We utilized the tendering expertise of Metro Rod to allow us to successfully apply for that tender and win that work. That work is commencing in the fourth quarter of this year. When we start work on site, we'll be able to introduce Willow Pumps and Metro Rod to obtain services with this customer. As we work together, we'll be able to continue to build up these cross-selling opportunities. Move on to the next slide. So record sales achieved um, in the first half, 92 million pounds. 94% of these sales came from franchisees. Uh, the year-on-year -year comparison isn't fully reflective due to the limited ownership period in the first half of last year, but this is a 2.2% increase in like-for-like -like sales over the first half. Again, the subdued conditions restricted the sales growth below what we would normally expect, but believe that this is a, uh, a decent performance in uh, subdued conditions. EBITDA growth was strong, 168% year on year. However, the comparison is not uh, ideal. We're very encouraged though by our measure of efficiency, which is the EBITDA to system sales. So we saw an 80 basis point improvement up to 11.2% first half this year versus first half last year. This was delivered through the ability to uh, streamline our overhead following uh, the integration with franchise brands and the work that we're doing on operation efficiency. We believe this uh, will continue to improve 
over the next few years as, as we work on the integration and we further implement uh, the integration of systems. So in summary, uh, a decent performance and hopefully building the foundations for growth. We see a subdued outlook for the rest of this year and into next year in the construction and plant hire sectors. <clears throat> However, continuing lowering of interest rates and government intervention in the UK with the planning regulations will boost uh, domestic uh, construction and Germany will continue to focus on their infrastructure development, which should lead to an increase in construction activity. This will allow us to grow that portion of the business and will require us to expand our network, put more technicians on to meet the additional requirement for construction and maintain the hardware customers in these allied uh, industry sectors. Continuing integration will allow us to improve operational efficiency. And finally, we're building the foundations for growth through the max potential model. So I'll hand over to Peter. Thanks, Chris. Um, Peter Malloy, the CEO of the Water and Waste Services Division. Um, change the slide. Yeah, change the slide, please. I got my name right, but didn't change the slide. <laughs> uh, in, in, as the slide illustrates, though, all of the businesses have been acquired by franchise brands since 2017, but all of the business equally have been long established prior to the acquisition. And I think it's also fair to say that the most successful period for each of the businesses has been since acquisition. Metro was the, the most significant acquisition back in 2017 and contribute 62% of the division's sales. As you can see from the slide, the split between the other businesses in Willow and Metro Plum and Filter. With the exception of Willow, the division is essentially franchised and there are no plans to change the Willow direct labour model. So 93 franchisees delivering the vast majority of the sales and the franchisees vary in size from sub £250,000 per annum sales to probably just about £4 million in, uh, in, in Metro. So a wide range of franchisees operating in, in effectively complementary sectors. And Chris touched on it in terms of the customer base and the opportunity for cross-selling. Clearly there are opportunities for cross-selling within the water and waste division and in terms of the services we deliver. But Chris's phenomenal customer base, each one of those customers at some point has a need for plumbing or drainage or some service from the water division. And that's got to be one of the key focuses going forward for us. We've had some successes. Chris talks about the utility company success. There are others where a leading coffee shop is now being serviced by two or three parts of the division, whereas previously that was only done by one element. Integration, I think you'll hear a little bit more about that as we move forward. It's, it's moving at a pace within the water uh, division, um, particularly in filter. Uh, Chris touched on the fact that Vision, the works management system, is now used in filter and a part of that which is filter seal. And that's this pretty unique refrigeration seal replacement business. And we were we will and continue to do so harmonize some of the services in terms of finance, HR, uh, health and safety, etc. And we will share some of those services. Next slide, please. So just going through each of the individual businesses, Metrorod um, increased system sales by just under 2 million quid year on year. Uh, and not our traditional 20% growth, but against the backdrop of some fairly tough trading conditions in our core markets. If I look at the facilities management market, for example, where we probably about 40% of our business comes from that sector. That sector is 5% down year on year. The food service establishments are down between 5 and 10% based on the research that we've done. And despite some softer job volumes, our average order value increased pretty significantly in uh, both Metro Rod and Metro Plot. 
And that's really a result of two strategic um, plans that we had in place. The first one being in 2018, we wanted to expand our range of services. And that's enabled us now to do much more sophisticated drainage work using tankers and pumps and higher ticket items and getting better bang for our buck for our franchisees. And then the other side was reducing our dependency on the low value insurance work that we used to undertake. We still do some of it, but that's reduced as a proportion of our overall sales. One of the things that we're all conscious of in terms of the economy is um, resisting or avoiding any bad debt. And we are much more aggressive in terms of our stance with delinquent debtors. Now, as soon as you put a customer on stop, clearly they're not going to spend any money with you. But there's actually a longer term impact where once they come off stop and they start trading with you again, they de-risk their own business by going and get an alternative supplier. And very seldom you get back to the pre-on-stop levels of sales. I think you do over time, but over a period of months, that remains depressed. Um, and importantly, the vast majority of our franchisees, I think it's 80% of the franchisees, grew their businesses year on year. And that's really important to us because that's the bedrock of our business as a franchise business. In terms of Metro Plum, uh, a net increase of two additional franchisees, now at 21. And that's in addition to the 18 combined businesses where the same owner has a Metro Rod and a Metro Plum franchise business. A very encouraging 14% increase in um, system sales, in part because this is a relative, still a relatively modest business, in part because of the increased brand awareness, in part because of a couple of very nice contract wins that we managed to secure at the start of the year. Keymac is a direct labour plumbing business based in and around London. And on the face of it, their 8% reduction in sales looks a bit disappointing. But if you take that as a backdrop of, we took about a third of their operating territory away from, from them and franchised it, actually it's a pretty strong performance in the Keymac business. Willow Pumps, in, in my view, the, the standout business in water and waste in the first half of the year, um, Although a modest increase in sales, a, a pretty significant increase in profit. And you may recall, if you've been on this meeting previously, that we had a change of management probably uh, 14, 15 months ago now. And some of the management actions that have taken have resulted in that increase in profit. So reducing the level of subcontracted works, um, better labour utilisation using our own labour, certainly better control of overheads. Um, on our supply and install part of the business, it is focusing on maybe lower value contracts, but higher margin contracts with a quicker gestation period. And that's certainly paying dividends for us. Filters probably were the most activities happening in the first part of the year. If you recall when we bought Filter, it was primarily a direct labour organisation and we committed to transitioning that to a franchise model at the time. And I'm pleased to say that by the end of this year, the available work firm that can be carried out by franchisees will be 100% franchise. The only exception being filter seal, uh, which we've got no plans to franchise currently. So 94% of the work that we do today is franchised, and that compares to 74% of the same period last year. One of the important factors with that is it gives us a real foundation to improve our customer service, which is starting to come through as a franchising. That enables us to be able to uh, uh, use that foundation to develop our sales, delivering much better service to our customers. One of the other elements of the filter business was we had a, it was very akin to the Willow business in terms of filter pumps. We're now transitioning that across to Willow so the highly skilled labour that we have in filter is being tubed into Willow. Willow are going to manage the pump element of the filter business without incurring any additional overhead costs. And again, I think delivering better support to the engineers on the ground, um, more efficient service to our customers, and certainly driving efficiencies in terms of margin. Next slide, please. So, in summary, the, um, 
Water and Waste Division, a challenging first half of the year, um, with a modest increase of, of 3% in terms of profit. Metro percentage EBIT, adjusted EBIT of system sales was down from 10% to 9.4, and that's primarily just due to inflationary pressures. The headcount has remained fairly static, um, but we have incurred in increased employment costs. And equally, Metro Road pick up some of the shared services costs for the rest of the businesses in the division. Willow, uh, as I alluded to, a very pleasing performance with a percentage increase from 9.5 to 11.9%, as I said, as a result of the management action that was taken in there. And I think that action is all sustainable and it's now really the, the benchmark that we want to move forward with. And filter, we, we always anticipated that there will be a reduction in the percentage of EBIT against system sales as we transition to a franchise business. In essence, we've been carrying the cost of a direct labour organisation um, in a franchise business. And we're addressing that and, and certainly by the end of the year, um, I think that will be much more akin to a cost base reflecting the business that we operate. So overall, against a, a backdrop of some challenging conditions, a pretty satisfactory performance in terms of a 3% increase in profit. And some of the actions that we're taking in terms of um, efficiencies through integration, trying to generate additional sales and uh, cost management gives me optimism for, for the second half of the year and into the future. So thank you. Uh, Steve, I want to hand over to you. Have you got right. Thanks very much. Next slide, please. Um, that was 80% of the EBITDA generation of the business. So I want to spin through uh, Filter International and the B2C uh, division quite quickly. Uh, Filter International, which is our business in uh, North America, mainly in the US, but a, a small business in Canada, uh, has grown well in the second half, of, uh, the first half of this year. This is a business we acquired in the first half of, of, of 22 and um, have since made a, 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 or in, are in the process of making a number of changes there, which is really moving the business now onto a, a royalty, an MSF model, rather than a fixed fee on the mobile filtration units, which the franchise is used to filter the oil. To, to allow that to happen, we've got to file um, uh, documents in every state in which we operate. That is all na now done. The franchisees now are being transferred on to um, the royalty basis. By the end of the half year, about 14% uh, were on a, on a royalty basis. By the end of the year, we think we might get to 40%. And what we're also doing in, in uh, the North American business is expanding the range of services. So now 70% of our franchisees offer um, the supply of virgin cooking oil to our customers. 40% now are offering the environmentally friendly, filtered clean um, kitchen cleaning service. And, and, and those uh, franchisees pay a royalty on from, from day one. So the business is expanding um, both in terms of the range of services it's offering and also in the way that we generate our income, which is now far more linked to the turnover the franchisees generate. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm going to skip over that one. Next slide. The, 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 the headwind in um, uh, the US in the first half of this year has been the revenue we generate from the sale of waste soil, which the franchisees collect uh, from the kitchens where they're, they're uh, uh, filtering the oil. The good news was that the uh, volumes of waste oil increased by 15% um, in the first half. The bad news is that the price declined by about 30% number of um, issues there, the import of um, uh, 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 used waste oil from China, um, uh, fairly abundant um, soya bean and palm oil crops, and also the way in which the federal government are, are subsidising uh, waste oil uh, recycling. That meant that our income from that activity declined from uh, 1.8 million to 1.4 million. And, and the franchisees' income declined from 10.4 to 8.7 million. So that has been a headwind in, in, in the US business. But nevertheless, um, a good performance in the, in the first half of this year and setting up the foundations for 
um, some some very strong growth in the US because they, they really only have a tiny share of a very large market in, in North America. Um, skip on a slide, couple of slides, please, to the B2C division. B2C division, which was the original core of franchise brands when I set it up back in 2008, uh, is now only 5% of the business. This business is quite challenging at the moment because with high um, employment and, and very high uh, wages at the moment, where, for example, a panel beater can earn £50,000 a year working in a body shop, why would they want to buy a Chips Away franchise for £30,000 when they can make maybe £60,000 a year working for themselves? So quite challenging on, on the recruitment side. Also quite challenging in retaining franchisees because a lot of franchisees buy a franchise as their last career move before they retire. And a number of those franchisees now are retiring. An awful lot uh, left the business during the COVID period when apparently people didn't want to work anymore. Um, but now we're, we're, we're on to the more natural retirement of, of, of these um, uh, franchisees. So the net number of franchisees also declined during the year, which again impacts our income. Nevertheless, the actually underlying trading of the franchisees themselves was very good. I mean, in Chips Away, um, their turnover was up 9%. Uh, uh, during the period. And this is partly to do with a very resilient customer base we have there. We call them the Waitrose customer. They, they, they're older uh, uh, people who are prepared to spend money on repairing small uh, damage to their cars, having their ovens professionally cleaned, um, uh, sending their dogs to uh, home sitting uh, uh, locations. So these customers are quite um, uh, resilient. So, so the underlying trading of the franchisees is good. This business generated a million pound uh, in, in, in the first half of the year. It'll generate over two million for the full year. Um, this is a business that generates 100% cash generation, uh, which is an important part of the mix in our business, particularly when we are uh, as fully borrowed as we are at the moment. So um, whilst that business um, is, is, is passively for sale, but we, we will not sell it until uh, we get an acceptable offer. Um, in view of time and, and to be able to answer your questions, I'm going to skip over the next um, uh, couple of slides and pass over to Andrew um, to go through the uh, financial results. Thank you. Next slide. Next slide. I'll run through very quickly the first half results. What, what I first need to bring your attention to is the first half contains a full six month contribution from per text, whereas last year can contains just 10 weeks. <clears throat> As such, system sales rose by 42% to 206 million. And if we run down to adjusted EBITDA, with system sales and adjusted EBITDA being our key internal measures of the success of the business, adjusted EBITDA rose by 45% to 17.8 million pounds. Um, if you drop down to the very last line on this spreadsheet, what that shows us is that we are increasing our percentage of adjusted EBITDA to system sales from 8.4 to 8.6%, in line with our long-term strategy to increase towards 10% as the, as the businesses grow. Um, cash conversion, which I'll discuss in slight more detail, grew to 72% in the first half of the year from 57% in 2023. And a lot of the numbers change by dint of the Pertec acquisition. Depreciation and amortization of software is again based on the comparable um, difference between the two periods in Pertec. The finance expense grew significantly as a result of the debts we, we took out to acquire Pertec. And taxes rose um, for two principal reasons. Corporation tax changed in early 2023 to 25% in the UK and the European operations and US operations incur slightly higher tax, tax rates in the country. Next slide. Adjusted in statutory profit. Um, again, the majority of the difference between our adjusted profit and our statutory profit relates to the amortization of the acquired intangibles from both the filter acquisition in 2022 and the Vertec acquisition last year. We also incentivise our employees through share options and the cost of those. 
showed a small increase in share based payment charge as we welcomed our colleagues from both Pertec and new colleagues into the wider group. Next slide. Um, earnings per share. Earnings per share fell slightly, again, for the, for the reasons I've, I've just given. The cost of the debt, sorry, the interest cost of the debt year on year, and also the raise, rising tax rate have meant that our, our EPS has fallen slightly. However, as we deleverage, um, the cost of interest will obviously reduce, therefore our earnings will increase. Um, and we are proposing and will pay a 10% increase in the interim dividend to 1.1 pence. Next slide. Cash flow, as I discussed, um, cash conversion from operations rose from 57 to 72%, but still uh, used five billion pounds of working capital. The focus through the second half of the year would be to reduce this this use of working capital still further and but as peter alluded to taking a stronger stance on um, slower payers occasionally affects our our profit results um, bank loan and lease repayments is the most significant other item within the cash flow and relates to paying down the bank debt which we paid three and a half million pounds and also the lease debt some of which we acquired through the acquisition of Pertec. Next slide. Net debt for bank covenant purposes fell below 70 million with 13.6 million pounds worth of cash. If you test this on a historic basis, our leverage is 2.19. And as you can see, we are firmly within our bank covenants. As we move forward, um, on a full year basis, this leverage should drop to below 2%, sorry, two times, and as such, we will receive, as part of our banking arrangement, a further reduction in the interest margin. And now I'll hand back to Stephen for a summary. Slide, please. And the final slide before we move into questions. So, In conclusion, really, a satisfactory performance in the first half of the year. Growth rates slightly below which, those which we've enjoyed in the past and uh, to which we intend to return in the future. Um, but a, a resilient performance. Uh, as I say, our, our emergency van based service is uh, an emergency service that, that, that people can't really uh, uh, avoid buying uh, you know when they have a digger stuck in a ditch or the drains are overflowing they need someone in to repair it and, and that makes our business uh, resilient up to a point equally when they're not using the machinery or they're not using the buildings they don't need the repairs and that at the margin does in, in, in impact our volumes a highly cash generative business um, brought the debt down now to uh, under two times the uh, forecast full year leverage. So, so well on track to de-gear uh, completely by uh, 2027. Um, our focus at the moment uh, and, and until we are more or less completely de-geared will be the integration of the acquisitions and, and the driving out of the, the synergies of this now quite significant uh, uh, scale of business. Um, as I say, we're mindful of the continuing uncertainty in the market, but we are seeing some signs of, of an uptick. So are um, optimistic for the rest of the year and have reconfirmed uh, the, the market forecasts. So I think that probably um, concludes the presentation. We've got quite a number of questions here. And as you may have seen, I've been working on those whilst um, everyone else has been talking. So I shall um now move on to the questions and some of them are really quite interesting so the first one uh a pre-submitted question uh was that given you grew domino's pizza to a market cap of greater than one billion pounds do you think the opportunity for franchise brands uh can exceed this within the next 10 years without share dilution i i've 
very much believe that we can uh, drive the, the market cap of uh, franchise brands for over a, a, a billion pounds. I don't think we can do that without share dilution, though, because um, uh, for those of you who've seen the presentation of the um, Capital Markets Day we did in February this year, we think the organic growth of the existing business over the next three years before we make the next major acquisition, we can probably double profits uh, to around 60 million. Um, not to say that's the end of the story for the existing business, they'll carry on growing then. But the, what we will then do is another large acquisition of scale. Um, and that will require um, uh, more equity to be issued. The name of the game is to continue to drive earnings per share. But I, 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 I couldn't promise that we, we will uh, not dilute. I think the other dynamic, um, which is game one we used at, at, at Domino's, is, is, is how we use the excess cash flow once we de-gear and, and, and there we can then buy in shares if it makes sense for shareholders to do so and, and it's earnings enhancing. And we also want to buy in shares to uh, uh, protect shareholders from the dilution of the uh, share options. I'd like to see gearing a little bit lower than it is at the moment before we start doing that again, but I think you could see us um, starting to buy in shares probably next year. Um, at a low level as, as the debt comes down. Next question. Um, this is from this is from John uh, John S. Uh, are there any new geographies or services you plan uh, to explore in the coming years? Uh, yes and yes. Um, the uh, in terms of. Uh, Geography, uh, we have the license uh, for the Pertec name in 16 European countries. We trade in eight at the moment. Two of those are early stage. Sweden and France are pretty early stage. So I think we're going to spend most of the next two or three years making sure they get up to uh, critical mass with national coverage. And it's quite important in any of our businesses to have national coverage because in that way we can get national businesses. Businesses don't really want us, us servicing them in part of the country. If, if, if they employ Pertec or Metro or Metro Plum, they want us to get. Uh, they, they want a national service. So, so expanding those geographies within a country is very important. Thereafter, um, we are looking at, uh, at where the next best opportunity is for Pertec, for example, in in in, in Europe, and we have some ideas on that. But we, I mean. As a clue, we are in Scandinavia, we're in Sweden. The rest of Scandinavia looks pretty attractive as well. Um, and there are other markets. Although, when you go into a new market with a franchise business, you've got to start out um, with a direct label organisation. So you could possibly see us buying an existing hose repair business in another country and using that as the, and re, then rebranding it into Pertec and then using that as the launch pad to the, initially expand direct labour operation and then start franchising. And that you may see that in, in, in Sweden and Scandinavia, um, probably less in France because the, the law there is pretty hostile to uh, uh, franchise businesses. Um, another big geography we want better representation in is the US. Um, at the moment, uh, that is underrepresented in, in, in our, our total business. My ambition is to have our income generated third, third and a third from North America, uh, the UK and, and Europe. So you can see that at the moment, um, uh, uh, North America and, and Europe are underweight. Another one from John S. Um, the interim dividend increased by 10% to 1.1 pence per share. What factors influence this decision? And what is your outlook on dividend growth uh, for the full year. Um, whilst we're, um, well, our, our capital allocation policy is, 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 is to balance debt repayment with dividends, with investment in the organic growth of the business. Um, debt repayment at the moment is the top priority, but we also wish to maintain a progressive dividend policy. So, and what we mean by that is that you will see year on year growth in the dividend consistent with the earnings um, 
uh, of, of the company. We are at the moment running at a dividend cover of just under four times. And I think that probably will be um, where we'll see for the next year or so until debt comes down a bit. So um, I think from that, you can probably work out what the final dividend Next question from David S. Is uh, Pertec Europe generated 92.8 million in system sales? Can you provide more details on how the acquisition has impacted your overall po portfolio and what growth opportunities you see for Pertec Europe in the near term? Well, as you can see, it was a, a, a massive uh, a, a acquisition for us. It doubled the size of the business as, Pertec, uh, as uh, Filter did when we acquired that in 22. Um, we, we think Pertec is a superb business with, with, with great customer base, uh, great um, stickiness of customers. I mean, they, they, once they use the Pertec business, they, they stay with them. The service is so great. I and mean, the service is quite incredible, actually, in that they, they guarantee to turn up to um, a customer's site or building within one hour. I mean, quite unbelievable that, that they can achieve that. Uh, across their entire business. And, and that is so market leading. We think that is a, a great opportunity uh, uh, for the future and in, in, in new territories. But Chris, have you anything to add to that? Growth opportunities, as we said, max potential model. I think when we presented um, at the capital markets, then we were talking many multiples of our current sales is the, is the potential. How long it will take us to get there is just the question. So I think we are working on ways to operationalize those potential customers into spending customers. I think that in all of our markets, from the UK, our, our oldest market, through to France, our newest market, we've got uh, enormous potential with new customers and also expanding the range of services and products with our existing customers. Thank you. Right, next question from Angus T. Uh, please, can you discuss volume versus pricing dynamics uh, within light for light growth and how this uh, fits in with the midterm system sales ambition? First off of this year, um, uh, let me define our terms first. Um, two things we talk about is average order value. And because we're not selling widgets, we're selling a service. Average order value depends on the size of the job. So you know, if, if, if it takes two hours to unblock a drain, they get charged for two hours labor. If it's a, a big hose, uh, hydraulic hose, it's more expensive than a little one. So, so average order value is um, what we look at in, 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 in terms of um, exposed volume. Underlying pricing of the hourly rate or the hose, in, in per tech, what was the price increase last? It varied from, from, from region to region, but um, we, we've we gone through a very inflationary climate a couple of years before, so we saw significant multiple price increases in each one of those years. Last year, um, pricing for products was very stable, so we saw limited incre inflationary increases in product <coughs> prices and labour rate, we saw increases um, depending on, on the local market. So in the Netherlands, there was recently a 7% increase in the labour rates uh, related to uh, the union agreement. Um, obviously, we, we increased that based on the, on the, on the union agreement in, in the Netherlands. In the UK, we tried to increase the labour rates in line with the, uh, the local inflation figures. Obviously, after our services are a slightly higher increase than in our services. So uh, it depends on the individual markets to what those are, but it was nowhere near the sort of very high levels that we've been seeing in, in, the, very, you know, in the past few years. And Peter in Orem West? Yeah, I mean, slightly different dynamic in terms of passing on to national accounts where we've got contracts over a two years or a three year period would be much more difficult. Where we've managed to secure uh, better prices is locally with the franchisees. And encouragingly, the the number of jobs that we've received from that part of our business increased by 2% last year. 
whereas there was a decline in the number of jobs we received from our national account customers. In part, some of that because we talked about customers being on stop, we decided we didn't want to trade with particular customers. So overall, um, it, it, as you alluded to, Steve, that average order value is a really key measure in the water and waste division. Um, and that increased pretty significantly, particularly in Metro Plum, where we, what we, we started to reduce the dependency on that fixed price insurance work. And you touched on it earlier in terms of the labor being a valuable resource, how do we get a better bang for our buck by making the right decisions? So that's sort of the strategy that we've adopted so far, and that's, uh, that's the result of the first half of the year. Thank you. Uh, next question from Angus T again. Um, please, can you provide a few more details on the CFO search and why you parted ways with BDO? Uh, CFO search has started. Andrew's doing an admirable job for us. In the meantime, for, for the fourth time as my CFO, he was my um, CFO when we floated Domino's and when we floated Franchise Brands. So he's back in harness at the moment, uh, but we will be looking for a, uh, well, we are looking for a permanent uh, uh, replacement. Uh, why we parted with uh, BDO, um, well, um, given that I was only presenting to you a couple of weeks ago with our full year numbers at the end of June, um, we received some pretty poor service, we think, from uh, uh, BDO. Um, so we have appointed PKF uh, as our new auditors and expect to report to you in a far more timely way uh, in early uh, uh, 25. Um, Michael R has asked, can you comment briefly on uh, Filter Europe? Clearly very small currently, uh, but what is the future strategy? Um, Michael, that's work in progress. Um, it is a small business. Um, it's sort of been somewhat unloved for a, a number of years. The actions we've taken over the last sort of 12, 18 months is really to stem the losses. I mean, it was um, a, a business which had an overhead structure um, targeted on growth. The growth did not come through in the way that we anticipated. So we've cut back the overhead now to um, generating about three and a half, four million pound a year in system sales uh, with an overhead sufficient to uh, operate that. We do need a new strategy for that. We're talking to our colleagues in uh, Pertec in Europe, in Germany and Holland about whether we somehow share premises or merge with, with those businesses. But at, at the moment, that strategy is still a uh, work in progress. But hopefully next time I report to you, um, We'll have a bit more to say about that. Javier I, uh, how does Filter uh, complete with restaurant technology in the US, given they are four times larger and their solution seems to be more efficient as it's more automated and is stored on site? Um, they also have a big presence uh, with most of the QSR chains. Can't really answer that. Um, don't really know, understand uh, filter, uh, uh, restaurant technologies um, uh, business. We're aware of the companies out there that um, replace the uh, cooking oil, um, don't filter it. They, they come in and collect the old cooking oil and, and, and re-deliver virgin oil. Ours is a different proposition to that because we can extend the life of the existing oil. I guess, by the sounds of things, uh, restaurant telegraphs must install some sort of filtration plant uh, on premises. Um, but I will look into it, and next time we meet, I shall give you a better answer. Angus T, please can you expand on your comments on working capital? What are your typical payment terms for franchisees, and do these different material across the product lines? What percentage of AR? has been outstanding longer than 30, 60 days, and has this increased materially in the weaker environment? Um, Andrew, can you answer? <coughs> no, I don't think it's increased materially over the, the um, weaker environment. And our, our debtors are made up of, of many different, in water and waste business, our debtors relate to the FM companies and the end customer. 
in our Pertech business, it relates to the franchisees. Um, so there are many different strands with some resilience put in by the fact that, that we are collecting, it, like I say, in Pertech from our franchisees and Peter is taking a more aggressive approach in water and waste. But um, we don't see a material shift, although obviously in the, in the presentation we did still use £5 billion of additional working capital. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, on cross-selling, are sales largely made up by franchisees or through central sales uh, functions? How are the franchisees incentivized to cross-sell? Cross-selling is really a central function. Um, uh, franchisees don't necessarily have sort of visibility of all the national accounts in all the different businesses. So we do this centrally um, for uh, national accounts. But, and, we, but we have encouraged the franchisees to meet each other locally to talk about their local customers. Yeah. Um, so Pertec and Metro, etc. cetera, Metro, but we're all meeting locally as well. Um, next question from uh, Lee A. How competitive are the markets uh, we operate in and which markets are we number one or number two player and which businesses do we plan to grow to number one or number two? Um, uh, well, Pertec is definitely number one in, in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. Um, France and Sweden, uh, we are obviously growing to become the number one or number two. The rest of our mature markets, depending on how you classify the industry, we are number one or number two um, in all of those markets for the majority of our services. Peter, where are you? Uh, it's really difficult to tell, yeah. and as Chris alluded, how do you define the market? I mean, there are certain things that we can do and certain things that we can't do. We're certainly in the top five or six you know, UK players in drainage, however you classify it. You know, and certainly <coughs> one of the leading two franchise businesses. Um, and in filter, the, the fog market is such a dis it's a discrete market that's really tiny in lots of regards and lots of small players. I would suspect that we're probably in the top one or two there. Um, we're all uh, difficult to tell in that market. Uh, but we've got ambitions to be number one in all of them. We've still got a small share of all the markets in which we operate. I think that's the point. That, yeah. that, uh, you know, when we look at the maximum potential model of the, the addressable market, they're huge. Um, now, have we identified all the competitors and, 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 and do we over-focus on what other people are doing? No, we don't. I mean, we, we run our own business to grow that as rapidly uh, as, as we can. And we encourage our franchisees to do the same. Um, probably what we can say on that. Um, uh, Lee A, what are the long-term trends, uh, organic growth rates uh, for the businesses of divisions over the next five years? stripping out the effect of acquisitions. The, uh, if, if you saw the, um, uh, the uh, Capital Markets Day uh, uh, presentation, you'll have seen we uh, set out a strategic plan there, which called for compound growth rates in system sales, organic um, growth of 10 to 12%. <coughs> uh, and, and we think that, notwithstanding that we didn't achieve that in the first half of this year, we think long term that is a, a reasonable target uh, uh, for us. We're definitely looking for double digit uh, system sales growth as, as we um, develop more ways of, of, of helping our franchisees grow their business. One of the key drivers will be the expansion of services. I mean, if you look at Metro Rod, for example, when we bought that business, it was a drain uh, clearing company. Uh, first thing we did was introduce tankering. Then we bought Willow Pumps to help the franchisees train up in, uh, in, in, in pump servicing. So that business has expanded uh, both through better penetration of the customers in the market, but more particularly by uh, uh, taking a bigger share of the customer spend because you know, we know what our customers spend their money on. It's just that we're not supplying it. So what we try to do is where it's complementary to the core service, we expand uh, uh, the range. So I think double digit um, 
organic growth is 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 achievable. Um, Lee A, what are the main differences between the maximum potential model and industry sales? Industry sales is not very interesting for us because of the businesses we're in. So if you look at, say, for example, drainage, I would say there's a lot more money spent on infrastructure drainage than there is on reactive repair. And that's not a market that we want to uh, uh, tackle. So, so we ignore that. What we look at is what the market opportunity is in the services we provide. And as I just said in the last answer, you know, that is ever expanding. So, so, you know, now pump repairs, now tankering to support pump repairs and, and drainage repairs does expand our, our, our market. But, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, if you looked at plumbing sales, for example, that would be an absolutely huge market because of uh, new building. I mean, I, I think we think it's five billion, don't we? Well, I think it's more than that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's huge. But, but, but we don't tackle most of that market. So we don't look at that. We use the maximum potential and an out addressable market. Uh, Lee A, do we engage in debt factoring uh, the DLO businesses to release working capital? No, we don't. Um, uh, I don't think debt factoring is, is, is value for money when we can access uh, traditional banking sources. Uh, Lee A, what valuation metrics and growth predictions are used when considering potential acquisitions? EV to EBITDA, growth rates and potential synergies. What I'm looking for in acquisitions is the market opportunity. Is this a business with the skill sets we have within franchise brands that were we to acquire it, can we grow it? Um, what is the quality of the franchisees? What is the profitability, viability of, 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 the, of the franchisees? Um, what is the mindset of, 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 of franchisees? All the things that can contribute to future growth. We're then looking for sort of EVs to EBITDAs that are hopefully earnings enhancing for our shareholders. But even if they're not on day one, if I think we can grow them with the, with the skills we have, they would then be um, uh, potential targets. I'm also increasingly looking at geography. Um, I think in years to come, our, our international footprint and our diversification of, of geographies and business is going to be what's well, contribute to the resilience uh, of, of the business longer term. Potential synergies, I think synergies are always way overdone when people talk about acquisitions. Um, there are synergies. Um, we are working hard at the moment on the integration of these businesses, but I think cost savings in themselves are, are sort of like a, a bit of a sugar rush, really. I mean, you, you get them on in, in year one, very nice. But what happens thereafter? I mean, what you've got to do is integrate the businesses and help your franchisees grow. Uh, did I miss a question there? Oh, I think I'm, I'm out of time. Okay. Perfect. Um, thank you very much for answering all those questions from investors. Of course, the company can review all the questions submitted today and we'll publish those responses on the Investor Meet company platform. Just before redirecting investors, provide you with their feedback, which is particularly important to the company. Stephen, I was wondering if I could just ask you for a few closing comments. Well, thank you very much for everyone attending. I hope we've um, uh, given you an insight uh, into the business. It's great to do this for the for the second time and, and, and um, get the hang of um, uh, the questions we're being asked. I hope it's been useful. And we will be back again, um, hopefully late, March, early April next year, rather than June with our, our, our full year 24 results. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Franchise Brands PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all.